Hello and welcome to another DLRP Roundup. Um, I want to talk to you guys today about the Pirates and Princesses annual pass party that was held in Disneyland Paris last weekend. And I do apologise, I have a little bit of a cold and it's slowly getting worse, but I have a cold so I may sound a little bit different today. The Pirates and Princess annual pass party was the first of its type for the Pirates and Princess season that's held at Disneyland Paris. It was held a week after the Pirates and Princess season ended, which is a very strange time to hold it. However, we were in between seasons at that point in time. Pirates and Princess had ended in Disneyland Park and the Marvel Summer, uh, Marvel Spring of Superheroes, I suppose we'll call it, uh, was going to begin on the saturday and it hadn't yet so they had an annual pass party and this was the first time they had done it so uh we went along the roundup went along and we enjoyed the annual pass party and here's some of the things that we found from it so first of all um we went to the park that day and it was very very busy it was a very very busy weekend because annual pass holders had been given um extra discount at the party so infinity pass holders were getting like 30 percent off that night off stuff in the park and then the next day and over the next weekend, it was going to be a massive discount. So we're getting 30% again if you're an Infinity Annual Pass holder. And it was going to be the start of the Marvel season, the Walt Disney Studios. So there was a lot happening. Also, the on-site hotels were quite cheap. And I remember talking about this with um, Jeff from DLP Town Square, where he said he, he got a really, really good deal on the Shen. So a lot of people were staying on site. And certainly the off-site hotels were kind of cheap because it was an off-season. So... One of those things that led for it to be a very busy night and a very good time. It was good for flights for us. We got our flights very cheap to go across and had a very, very good time. Disneyland Pass was having fun. Now, the interesting thing about the annual pass party is you may have seen right at the offset, the, the, for the annual pass parties, they don't quite do what they do for the Halloween party. At the Halloween party, they set up little gates within the park and kind of filter people through and check their wristbands and everything like that. The annual pass party is different. They kick everybody out after eliminations. And then once they clear the park, they let everybody back in that's got a ticket for the party. The problem with that being that it takes a little bit of time to get all those people back in the park. So the party officially started at 9pm. And I would say everyone wasn't in until about half past nine. Because we were all in a big, big queue all the way up to the Disney Village from the gates of Disneyland Park. So it was certainly, um, they struggled a little bit with the, cl- the crowd control. I don't know if that is caused by the fact that people who watched Illuminations and lingered in the shops maybe lingered a bit too long. I don't know if it's the... They had some overlays on the Main Street Station and they had some overlays in the park and I don't know if it took them a little bit to get that working. So certainly they don't want to diminish that. So you would rather walk in, have the overlays and you got a free giveaway when you walked in. So I think they wanted all that in place before they let us in. So it was a little bit, there was no announcements, there was nothing to let us know, like we know we're running a little bit late. So I think that a lot of people were getting a little bit excited and got a little bit apprehensive. They weren't getting in straight away. But when you got in, so once we get in, and they, they process it really quickly, and you're with people that actually know you know how to scan a ticket and things, so it makes a huge difference when you're at an annual pass party because people know what to do. Once you get in the park, you were greeted with an, a, a very small overlay, but an overlay on Main Street Station anyway, and they also had characters up there who were waving and welcoming you and asking you to pick your side. So if you went through the centre, you were picking the princesses, and if you went through one of the edges, you were picking the pirates. So we picked pirates and we got a scroll and things and it was a pirate scroll. So it was quite good. It was quite good to walk through and you had to pick your side, which is really like picking your side. They've never actually released the result on who won. There was never like a, oh, the pirates won or the princesses won. I don't know. That should be a thing. It maybe should be a thing. There were a lot of people dressed up. A lot of people dressed up as princesses. A lot of people dressed up as pirates. It was absolutely fantastic to see it. The atmosphere, and I've got, I've got to give... Um, some credit here there were certainly some dutch people who were dressed up as pirates who were running around shouting yo-ho and starting chants of yo-ho everywhere they went and to be honest that was great atmosphere because it was something organic it wasn't planned it wasn't scripted it certainly wasn't the land paris that done it it was just people were having so much fun dressed up as pirates and princesses in the park and certainly you know you kind of think oh they want all the men to go to the pirates and they want all the girls to go to the princesses you know that sort of absolute rubbish but nope we are here in 2019 and i'm proud to say there were there was at least a few six foot men in uh, princess dresses and i'm not talking they wore little dresses that you could 
kind of you know could get cheaply no these were the full shebang these people had the full bell and the the, the full uh, sleeping beauty dresses and i was so impressed i was so impressed at the effort and some of the pirate outfits were spectacular so a lot of people dressed up the entrance was spectacular and then the magic begun once you walked onto main street there was a pink hue a pink and purple hue and um, so all the parade lights had been put up and rather than being white they were all pink and purple so you walk down and the uh, uh, music and certainly we have videos on our youtube channel at youtube.com forward slash dlrpr um, you, you can see some of these atmospheric videos they had pirates and princess music in various languages i think there was about four or five languages playing music and it was all soundtracked and it was fantastic and the further up you walked up main street the more you got to see so in the castle hub again everything uh, a sort of pinky purple hue all the trees were kind of sparkling in different colors as well so they had the full dreams tech on the full dreams of christmas tech actually was on um the the fountains were on so they had the water fountains coming on and doing little dance with some watercolour the castle was lit up there was a sparkle occasionally in the castle so again using all the technology of the castle they were projecting onto the castle and during certain events it would become a pirate themed castle and other events it was a princess themed castle and then it had an overlay that just generally looped while you were there so again absolutely fantastic the actual shows that were on the night um, the there were kind of two main big events three main big events i should say one of them from the two sort of sides was the parades and in that they had three events so the first one was the pirate show stop uh, and you got to kind of do the wee pirate dance that normally gets done and it got done on the castle stage and then again on main street and to be honest great fun great fun and the parades look so much better in the dark to be honest Disneyland Paris really need to take advantage of this the, the dark is a fantastic time for these parades it's the same with the Halloween soiree the parade in the dark is fantastic and they absolutely need to come up with a small cavalcade of three floats or something and batter it out through that park while it's dark they just do there is no way they shouldn't have a dark parade because the dark cavalcade the dark parades are just fantastic you then had the princess show stop which of course is basically one massive float and it come out and it done its bit and then after that we uh, got the final confrontation which was where the pirates and the princesses all came together in the in the hub in the castle in front of the castle in the hub and they kind of had a dance off and there was fireworks and there was really you know up tempo music and everybody felt really good and the princesses waved and fist bumped and all that sort of thing and i presume the pirates did on the other side as well it was fantastic it was a really good end to the night it was really good the final confrontation was a really really good bit that kind of ended the party so that was really good now during the party what else could you do you could go and see minnie's pirate tutorial now minnie's pirate tutorial existed from either 2014 2015 one of those from the halloween party and the Pirate Academy or the Pirate Tutorial uh, took place in the Castle Stage at that point, but has now been moved to the Discoveryland Theatre. Fantastic show, full of energy, it has some great music, great character interaction, and to be honest, the whole crowd loves it. Again, the video is available on YouTube. However, I would say that even though it was in Discoveryland, it was out in the Discoveryland Theatre, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think it's better on the castle stage, certainly because they get fireworks involved in it, and I think that adds another dimension to it. Whether or not they wanted to do fireworks that late at night, I don't know, but certainly they're, they're quiet fireworks, so I don't see the problem with it, and it's very little. I personally feel the show is better outside than inside, so I, I, I would definitely say that I would have preferred to have seen the show outside but it was fantastic inside the other thing that nipped me a little bit is um they wouldn't allow you to go and sit so they're seating obviously surrounding the, the stage in discovery land theater um and then you've obviously got the, the main eatery and that's where there are thousands of extra seats i can't quite understand why we weren't allowed to go and sit in all the extra seats because it made us stand and it's kind of awkward and caused a little bit of confrontation with the cast when there was clearly too many guests to watch it and it would have just been nicer to have a seat. So I do feel a little bit that they, that in future, if they're going to put on shows in there, certainly they need to make the seating a little bit better and they need to open it up and just, you know, I get that it's going to be extra labor and a little bit more intensive to clean it up, but that's just unfortunately the reality of it. 
Um, food was a little bit of an issue, there weren't too many food places opened, it was a little bit restricted on what you could have and certainly once you got to midnight, once you got to um, 11 o'clock, sorry, till midnight, there was pretty much nothing. There was honestly almost nothing, there was cases I think and that was about it, the market house daily and there was cases and that was it. So that was a little bit disappointing, I personally felt it could have done better there. Um, but a lot of people were so happy about the meet and greets and a lot of people met lots and lots of characters a lot more than they thought they were going to meet um, personally didn't meet any because I'm not a character sort of person but there were tons of character meets on and that was the main purpose of the tickets on that night I suppose the other thing you got to do is walk through a lot of the areas in the darkness with a little bit more um, pirate or princess theming and I personally uh, really enjoyed all the attractions. It was really nice that it brought Big Thunder Mountain back on for that. It was a really nice touch that the annual pass holders were the first people to get back on it. It was fantastic to see that the end sequence in Thunder Mountain with the smoke and the cave and all the effects were working. It was fantastic. It was one of the best ride throughs of Big Thunder Mountain that I've ever had. And I personally think it was the best one that I'll probably ever have in any Disney park because it just worked flawlessly and the atmosphere was fantastic with people dressed up as pirates and princesses and everything like that so once you kind of take all that into account you've got your parades you've got your free gift you've got a um, extra shopping discount you've got the final confrontation which was really to be honest the final confrontation is not great because because it only run once and because everybody knew where to stand the central hub the very central hub got absolutely packed and everybody else really struggled to see the show. So I think, you know, for that point, it's not the best show, but there's not really another way they could have done it, I don't suppose. Um, what I would say for improvements in the future, there's there's two improvements they really should make to the annual pass parties, and they haven't, but these are two really simple improvements, and to be honest, I don't see why they wouldn't take advantage of it. From the Halloween night, they should definitely on the um, annual pass parties, just given that it's usually an older demographic. Of course, there's children there, but annual pass holders are usually a bit older. They're teens to uh, young adults to mid-adults or whatever you want to call. In fact, it's a little older than that as well, to be honest. I don't know. Where do I fit in that now? However, they um, should definitely offer the cocktails. I can't understand why they didn't take the opportunity to sell people, you know, 10 euro cocktails in the park. It literally takes a little booth or a hut or a tent and it would have been so easy. The demographic was right. It was certainly the right atmosphere and I think that cocktails could have been in the park and they could have sold a lot there. They certainly should have done a little bit more and had a special cupcake or a, a special sort of I don't know, a sticker on a biscuit or something, you, you know, those sort of things you could have sold more, so Disneyland Paris, you can make some money here, you really can make a bit more money by having a little bit more merchandise available on the night that's specific to the night, and I think that if you had done a limited t-shirt run for people who could have bought a limited edition either set of ears for Pirates and Princess or a limited edition um, t-shirt run for that one specific night, I think you'd have sold a lot. Even a specific pin. Maybe a pin would have been a better idea. I don't know. So you could have done a pin, a t-shirt, ears. You certainly should have been doing cocktails and you certainly should have been selling biscuits with stickers or whatever you want to call them. And on top of that, one thing I really would like but they didn't have and I think that, to be honest, they should have it all the time is they had the... They had the... Uh, they had a princess waltz however i definitely think the better idea would be to have a dj i definitely think that every annual pass party and every party in disneyland paris should come with some sort of character dj because it's just so much fun and a little dance off and a little you know it's absolutely fantastic and you'd be able to sell more cocktails and that is probably my thoughts on the pirates and princess annual pass party where it was not too busy, it felt very, very quiet in the park and they could certainly, they could have, you know, increased the amount of tickets another 25, 30% and I don't think anybody would have noticed. So they say it sold out, I think they could have sold, you know, another 30% of tickets. There were certainly people on resort that wanted to go and, you know, personally I don't have a problem with that. I think private, I think parties are a good idea and whether restricted to annual pass holders or not, I don't particularly care. I'm an annual pass holder, it's nice and maybe we get a heads up or we get a slight discount on the, the price, but I definitely think you should top up resort guests as well that want to be there because a lot of people I'm sure felt as though they were missing out. Maybe I'll convince them to be annual pass holders. Maybe that is the plan. It was a fantastic night. I will definitely be attending more annual pass parties as and when they come up. And I think this the annual pass party for Pirates and Princesses was absolutely one of the best that have run. And I think that a little bit more merchandise and certainly a DJ would wouldn't go amiss. I've been Graham. That's been a roundup. Goodbye.